So example 3.5 looks at uh, a situation where we're trying to make a transmission line look like a two picofarad capacitor. Okay, and we have some, uh, you know, our, our, our design constraints here, the operating frequency, the phase velocity, and our character characteristic impedance of our system here. Um, so one approach is to use the equations that we just derived directly. Uh, like I just said, we know um, we know all of these values. We can just plug everything in, and we see that our um, transmission line is uh, you know 17.2 percent of a wavelength. Okay, uh, we can use the phase velocity and the uh, operating frequency to f come up with the uh, wavelength. So we plug that in, and we see that if we have a transmission line that is open circuited on one end and we make it 13.23 millimeters long then the impedance seen looking into that transmission line will be capacitive and will have a capacitance of two picofarads so that's one approach using the equations like I said we're, we're going to transition to using the Smith chart um, so you can see the, the the figure over here on the on the right kind of alludes to the process um, I just wanted to kind of zoom in and, and show a little bit more detail. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, so I, I reproduced the markings on the Smith chart uh, in my PowerPoint here. So um, this is the zero point. Uh, corresponds to the um, case where the load is um, short circuited, like I mentioned before. You can see here that uh, there's these arrows kind of pointing clockwise. And the text here that's underlined in red says wavelengths toward generator. So what this means is, let's say that you have a uh, short circuit. So I have the um, situation depicted up here in this figure. Um, if we were to measure the impedance at this point, of course, we would be, you know, if we were to measure the impedance at z equals zero here, we would be at this point on the Smith chart. We have a, a short circuit. Um, as we move towards away from the load and towards the generator, um, that causes us to rotate around the Smith chart in this direction, which is indicated by these arrows on the Smith chart. Okay, so let's say we ended up at this point at Z in at uh, D equals L here. Well, that length would correspond to um, here we have 0 0.00. .00 um, and here we have uh, 0 0.046, uh, maybe, something like that. So this distance, this rotation here, would correspond to 0 0.046 of a wavelength. Okay, You just take uh, the point where you end up, and you subtract off the point where you started from, and it gives you the uh, fraction of a wavelength that corresponds to uh, that rotation. So this fraction of a wavelength uh, is the the length of the transmission line that would be required in order to make that impedance transformation from point one to point two. Okay, at where z equals zero and z equals uh, l. Okay, so I hope that's clear. All right, so um, So we want a capacitor of two picofarads. Um, so the expression for the uh, reactants would be given by this equation, obviously. Um, but when we normalize it to 50 ohms, since our system is a uh, is 50 ohms, we end up with 0 0.53. <clears throat> so um, we have to find out um, which curve of constant reactance corresponds to uh, to this number here. So I guess using the um, symbol x that I used before. So we have to figure out what this curve corresponds to. Um, so 0 0.53 ends up being uh, somewhere right here on, on this on this curve. Okay. Um, we're going from an open circuit to that impedance. So we're going from an open circuit impedance where the impedance is essentially infinite 
and we are rotating towards the generator to where um, the impedance corresponds to uh, you know this value of 0 0.53 which corresponds to the two picofarad capacitor in this case so we want to start off here at, at point 0.1 uh, rotate clockwise towards the generator to that line of constant reactants uh, the, the line of 0 0.53 and then the um, the angle of rotation would be um, at this side at 0 0.25 and at this side here it's 0 0.422 so rather than using these equations that we used last time we know just from the Smith chart um, you know reading directly from the Smith chart the amount of rotation that would be required to go from an open circuit to um, uh, this uh, constant reactance curve would be the difference between um, you know the readings that we see on, on the uh, outside of the Smith chart okay so we end up with the same value that we um, that we came to last time of uh, 13.23 millimeters so Hopefully that was clear. It's, um, I mean, it's a very manual process. Um, you just have to uh, do a couple of examples in order to, you know, get it down. Um, but I won't make you do many examples. Rather, we're going to use this here. Uh, this is called SimSmith. Um, you can download it at this link shown down here.